focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to Digitizing India, Cisco initiative in collaboration with CNBC TV 18. In our final episode of this build up to Digitizing India Awards, we're looking at the impact of digitization on India's manufacturing sector. We look at how Mahindra and Mahindra is making its factories smarter and how ITC is improving its supply chain with the help of technology. In 2014, Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched the Make in India campaign with a vision to make India a global manufacturing hub. The goal is to increase the contribution of the manufacturing sector to the national GDP from the current 16% to 25% by 2025. This ambitious campaign has received a widespread positive response with Indian and international businesses announcing plans to invest large sums in manufacturing. A sizable chunk of this investment will be in technologies that will improve manufacturing processes. Companies are increasingly using the power of digitization to shorten production time, utilize resources optimally and cut costs. One such example is Mahindra and Mahindra's state-of-the-art automobile plant at Chakhan in Pune. Spread over 700 acres, the plant has an annual manufacturing capacity of 3 lakh automobiles, a target that is easily achieved with the help of new age tech phenomena like the Internet of Things. Here we produce 40 models because of IoT, machine learning, machine-to-machine -machine communication, MES systems, sensors, sonics, all these stuff are coming together to create a state of the world manufacturing plant, one of its kind. Without these, the plant cannot produce the 40 models that we do. We have used this as vital health indicators. What is vital health indicators means like, uh, you know, if you put vital health indicator, we tell your blood pressure, your sugar, your heartbeat and so on. We have used uh, this digitization journey to give us all our health in indicators of a manufacturing organization. And last but, uh, last but not least, this allows the plant, even the machines to tell us when it's going to break down. So that we can have uh, proactive shutdown or maintenance done so that there is no shutdown uh, or unplanned stoppage of the plant. This has been hugely successful. We have had uptimes more than any other plan. An important part of digitization are the people who implement it. Beyond connecting the shop floor, the digitization of an organization also includes training, reskilling, and upskilling of manpower. At Mahindra and Mahindra, people are at the very core of the digital wave sweeping the company. One of the key issues that digitization will throw up eventually is reskilling of manpower. Okay? Let me give you an example of finance and accounts which is, which is easy uh, and which we have seen over a period of time. Uh, when earlier the books were written by accountants, today nobody writes books of accounts. It gets generated on its own. Now the accounts people become controller. Analyze, analysis persons, analytics, uh, they do MIS and they give insights and MIS. So that's how the changes happen and in a broader level they become financial advisors and value creators. This is what shift will happen in each of the function as you go through digitization. That will happen to even our workforce in manufacturing setups across and we have to adapt and adopt. So, for example, we have a training program called Play to Win, where we are saying in order to win you may have to change and adapt and therefore can I encourage you to exist in an ambiguous world and be ready for change and change as the uh, environment changes. 
Indeed, change is the only constant. And Mr. Partha Sarthi strongly believes that going forward, a large number of digital innovations will completely transform the manufacturing industry like never before. Internet of Things, machine to machine learning, MES, the sensors, the analytics, the big data, all of them is going to change the way manufacturing, uh, the face of manufacturing, it is going to change in a way that was not seen before. Chakan today is a shining example of it. Tomorrow, Chakans will become the rule. That's how I see the changes. Along with technology, today manufacturers are also innovating their business models by transitioning into services. They are nimble-footed and quick to offer value-added services in addition to their regular product offerings, creating new market opportunities and staying ahead of the curve. It opens immense opportunities and it has immense challenges. When Uber and Ola come in, they capture the shared market. But when I come with Smart Shift and Tringo, then I start participating in a new market called the shared economy and I can become the aggregator. Along with selling the final products to the passion people directly. So, I, there are new markets that will open up, and open up that will provide opportunities. Not participating, not being there first will be a challenge and that will be detriment if you don't reach there right. So this is a journey which one has to proactively take and Mahindra, I am happy to state, is in that proactive stage. One of the ways for manufacturers to move from a product-centric model to a service-centric one is by offering predictive analytics and predictive maintenance. Experts believe that these analytics will play a key role in ensuring customer satisfaction and fuel the growth of the manufacturer as well. The as-a-service model in manufacturing is a new phenomenon, but we are seeing a lot of benefit come from that in very specific niche verticals that we have seen. And it primarily has to do with the fact that as you digitize and as you connect machinery, the ability to track, the ability to watch all the different parameters in, the, in your factory goes up dramatically. And the question is, who is the best person to look at this data? Who is the best person to analyze and interpret this data and therefore provide better outcomes? And uh, if I can use a very simple non-manufacturing example, I would probably pick an example like a Xerox machine in your, in your office. Earlier, it used to be like you had to buy that device and you had to put it in your office. And then anytime you needed a consumable, like a cartridge goes away, you need to replace it. You had to call somebody and they had to come in. They have now moved to a model which is on a paper basis model, which is like they actually give it to you on a lease. And then over a period of time, they're able to track which cartridge is going out of ink, where there are issues in the machinery because it's now connected to the, um, to the internet to that extent. And therefore, they're able to move to their model. We're seeing similar trends happening in the manufacturing sector. Uh, a classic example would be in the aircraft industry, especially with, with the aircraft engines. Most of the companies are looking at and starting to move to a model where they can provide predictive analytics, they can provide predictive maintenance as well, and therefore do it as a service to the, uh, to the aircraft industry, which fundamentally is a leasing industry to that extent, right? Now, why is this important? Firstly, better customer stickiness to that extent, right? Now, you own the equipment, you actually are able to provide much better services to them as well. So, the, obviously, the customer stickiness goes up. The second piece is to the company which does it, there's much greater agility around this, right? They're actually able to control, they're able to predict when missions are going to go down, when maintenance has to get done. They're able to shift demand from one assembly line to the other. So there's a lot of agility which comes in when you start doing as a service model as well. And finally, for the end user, it's the be better business outcome. Increasingly, digital technologies like the Internet of Things, cloud computing and big data analytics are helping manufacturers improve efficiencies, scale up productivity and minimize the downtime on their workflows. On that note, it is time for us to head into a short break. But when we return, we find out how Indian conglomerate ITC is using digitization to improve its supply chain. Stay tuned.
welcome back. You're watching Digitizing India, Cisco initiative in collaboration with CNBC TV18. Headquartered in Kolkata, ITC is a multi-business conglomerate with interests in FMCG, hotels, agriculture, information technology and packaging among others. Let's take a look at how the company is using digitization to streamline the supply chain in its agri-business. Incorporated in 1910, ITC is one of India's leading corporations with a nationwide presence. One of the country's largest exporters of agricultural commodities, ITC's agri-business unit chalked up a turnover of 7,450 crore rupees in FY15-16. Over and above adopting digital solutions to optimize business processes, efficiently manage clients and engage with customers, ITC believes that technology can be instrumental in the procurement phase by plugging the information gap faced by farmers. See, one of the major gaps uh, in case of agriculture today is the knowledge gap uh, for the farmer as to how do I respond to a particular situation. Either there is an unseasonal rain or there is a very warm winter or there is a certain kind of an insect attack. And the agricultural extension system which brought this knowledge to the farmer uh, is not as rapidly replenishing itself and refreshing itself to help the farmer to do it and is not available on a real-time basis everywhere. So this is where technology can really supplement and ensure that, that knowledge is available. Uh, image processing today uh, can instantly compare a, a disease on a leaf with a library of uh, the leaves that are available through ongoing machine learning and say what is the possible diagnostic here and therefore how do you uh, deal with that situation. It can be done either by the farmer himself using a smartphone or through an assisted handling by uh, an extension worker. Uh, so I think knowledge gap is something that uh, the technology can really fill in. Leveraging the power of technology, ITC conceived eChopal in the year 2000. The initiative tackles problems of insufficient information, fragmented farms and multiple intermediaries with an aim to make the supply chain more efficient. If I illustrate it with a very simple example like Atta, which is a very staple uh, product, uh, the consumers have different taste preferences and texture and so on, various qualitative preference across the country. Uh, the erstwhile supply chain system was not able to deliver that. As a result, consumers are actually buying wheat and getting it milled uh, to their own liking. And the digital technology in the form of each Opa really helped in creating a back-end where you could preserve the identity of different varieties of wheat, create that whole traceability from the mill and the packed Ashirwad Atta to a complete back end uh, so that you are delivering what a consumer wants for the consumer delight uh, by understanding the consumer needs, the product chemistry and the, the product physical parameters on which it is bought from the farmers. So as a result, in addition to creating uh, a very successful brand, uh, from a company's perspective, uh, more importantly, it helped in aligning production from the farmers to what is in demand from the consumers, helping them uh, growing those kind of uh, varieties and consequently raising uh, a, a share of farmers' income as part of a consumer price as well as to productivity higher income. So I think if you are able to really look at this inclusive value chain goals, that was something which was possible only uh, using a digital technology. In a normal supply chain, it would not be feasible to deal with millions of farmers and ensure this traceability uh, all the way to the farm, uh, starting with the consumer. ITC's eChopal services reach out to over 4 million farmers in 35,000 villages across 10 states of India. But achieving this outreach has had its share of hurdles. Access to power and telecom bandwidth were some of the biggest challenges. So when we started uh, this whole eChopal initiative, telecom penetration was not as good as it is today. So we had to deploy our own KU band VSAT system to get pointed access uh, to uh, telecom bandwidth. Power, even today it's an issue. Uh, to supplement power, we had to uh, co-research uh, with a solar power company to ensure that appropriate uh, size solar power panels and cost is available to make power available when it is required and so on. 
But I think what is interesting is that all of these physical hurdles may be there, but the minute value is demonstrated to a farmer, so he was taking technology like fish to the water. So therefore, that adoption really created enthusiasm that uh, you can really bring technology to the grassroots and make a difference there. There is concern from some quarters that villagers and farmers may not get the most out of these digital solutions owing to illiteracy. Furthermore, challenges of travelling long distances to reach the e-chopal and imparting skills to first-time internet users are other apprehensions raised. But learnings from the e-chopal initiative over the last 15 years offer a contrasting view. Once you demonstrate the value uh, of what this technology does uh, to a situation, adoption by the farmers or other rural people is extremely rapid. In fact, even long ago when we started with e -chopal, we kept aside two days for training the e -chopal Sanchalaks to take this knowledge to the uh, farmers. Uh, when they knew that this is how you can access weather information in terms of forecast, this is how you can access price information, all it took was three hours for them to get trained in that and they said, okay, what next? So I think value demonstration ensures rapid adoption of technology uh, irrespective of uh, how uh, backward uh, people are in terms of literacy or other infrastructure. As more and more businesses take up digitization, experts believe that it is crucial for organizations to devise an end-to-end -end digital plan and not just implement solutions in silos. As you think about digital transformation in the manufacturing sector, there's obviously quite a few challenges. From a technology perspective, it has to do with the fact that most of the manufacturing sector, they haven't thought of technology end-to-end. -end. They've actually added technology at any point in time in silos. As in when they had to upgrade something, they upgraded. The interoperability is extremely poor because different networks exist, different uh, infrastructures exist, protocols exist. That's the first piece within technology. Second one is security. As you get the machines connected, obviously security and vulnerability around security becomes a huge, uh, huge concern as well. So that's the second piece which we need to talk about. And the third one is the integration challenges. You have different missionaries from different companies. If you don't have the seamless protocols in place to be able to talk to each other, you're going to have integration challenges. This is on the technology side. But even if you get all the technology pieces in place, what we have noticed is the business processes also have to get aligned. You have to first figure out which are the areas you want to focus on, which are the business outcomes you want to go impact. Generally, what we have seen is if you don't have that kind of planning done up front, people kind of stretch themselves too thin across very, uh, way too many parameters to that extent. So it's important to figure out what areas you want to focus on, what business outcomes you want to drive, what is going to give you that, um, that impact that you're looking for. You see this trend now where a lot of companies are thinking about putting a digital officer. It could be a chief digital officer, it could be a CIO, but essentially the notion is people have accepted that as digitization, hap digitization happens, you need to figure out a way to get decision-making processes streamlined as well. You need to figure out how does the data, data flows go? Where does the data go? Who takes the decisions? And therefore, how should I think of my overall organization? It also has impact in terms of what kind of employees do you hire? What kind of capabilities do you need in your IT team? What kind of capabilities do you need in your technology teams as well? So to me, it's yes, technology is a challenge. The business challenges, the business processes are an important challenge as well. And the third one, most important for me, is the org and the change management which has to happen on a digitization. The advent of the fourth industrial revolution, called Industry 4.0, is seeing businesses use automation and data-driven processes in manufacturing, which is radically changing the industry as we know it. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this episode, but do stay tuned to the channel for the Digitizing India Awards, where we honor and recognize the best digital innovations from across the country. Be a part of the conversation on social media by using the hashtag Cisco Digitizing India. Till then, from the entire team, goodbye and many thanks for watching.